It's me, Coach Rosa. Uh, I took off my glasses, so if you start talking to me, I might have to put them back on. I should probably put them in my hand then. I'm coming to you live. Um, I promised you yesterday that I would talk about uh, how to help you get through this season without gaining a single pound. That's going to be our, our weight loss challenge. And I know it's kind of early to talk about holidays. I know it feels early. But I don't know if you know this, guys. I have been in the weight loss industry and have been working my my own I wrote a book on it was called Mind Over Platter my program which has been since 1996 we're talking 20 years right you can trust me I know what I'm talking about this month is where the weight gain starts guys this is where the bad habits begin Halloween people have candy laying around at their desks everywhere you go you start with one sugar is highly addictive and then you want more you want more and you fail to have a good plan and then December hits and you're up already seven or eight pounds and you don't know what happened and then panic sets in so we're gonna start off ahead of the game and I'm gonna give you three major tips that are from my decades of experience um, and in order to get to the point where you're approaching the season and you get through it without gaining a single pound, you want to be mentally prepared to hopefully lose some weight even before the holidays come along. It's a little harder to lose weight during the holidays because there's a lot of temptation around. I know you could do it if that's what you so choose. Um, so let's get started. Um, first thing I want to say is three things. Think ahead, communicate, and schedule. Those are three things you need to do to get ahead of the game. So, um, hey, hey, Susan. <laughs> I'm going to put my glasses back on so I can see. Um, great to see you, Susan. So, thinking ahead. First of all, and this is coming from what I've studied the most, which is naturally thin people. People who have such a good um, mental way of, of going about their day and their life and the way they eat, they don't even know that they're doing the right things. They just naturally, intuitively do it. So thinking ahead means look ahead over the next couple months and think about what activities am I, what events am I participating in? What activities am I going to do to move my body to help me keep my metabolism up and keep myself burning those calories? And what's my actual food plan gonna look like? So thinking ahead is taking time and really looking at it and saying, oh, I've been invited to a Halloween party. What I'm going to is on October 14th. What am I going to wear? Um, what am I going to eat? What kind of food might there be there? Those kind of things. Hey, Donna, nice to see you. So be aware of that and know, because if you're following a very specific food plan, there, it may not be available at that party. It may not be there, and if it's not, you're going to have to bring it or, or eat before you go and be prepared to snack on something that you don't feel like you're missing out. And then what activities do you have planned during this time period so that it's going to counter all the fun you're having? Because everything, guys, everything, and I've raised kids, I had a daycare for 10 years, you can trust me, there's natural consequences, there's a consequence to everything. And so um, if I'm going to indulge, and I know it's that time of year where there's certain things I really love, well then I need to kick up the activity to burn the calories so I feel good about it and my clothes still fit. So that's the first module thinking ahead. Second module to get mentally prepared, communicate. You have got to communicate. And when I say communicating, I mean three very different types of communication. One is going to be, you need to set some boundaries. This is so important. And I'm not saying that, that it's easier for some than others, but if you're a caretaker, especially I've noticed when I had my private practice, many women that were caretakers found it very difficult to set boundaries. Boundaries are important and they're healthy and you've got my permission to set them. So this is an order. Coach Rosa said, set some boundaries. And that means what works for you. What's gonna fit in your schedule? So a boundary might be, yes, I wanna participate in these, these happy hours, these parties, these events, and I've gotta get into a workout or I'm gonna walk every day at lunchtime. These times are off the table. I can't, those are non-negotiable. Okay to have that, guys. That is how you stay healthy and fit. Hey, Judy, congratulations, Grandma. I'm so excited to see you, honey. Um, so communicating, communicating your boundaries and being clear with it 
And the second thing I want you to know, especially when you're communicating some of these things, there's two people you're going to talk to, two types of people. This took a long time to master, but trust me, I got it down now, and you want to do this. You want to get that person who's going to support you, that person who understands you, who really understands your values and what's important to you. And um, you want to say to that person, look, I need your help. Mine's always my husband. Honestly, Jerry. He's my, he's my, uh, he's my sweetie. I'll say, Jer, honey, I haven't been eating a lot of red meat lately. So when we go out, I need you to do me a favor. If anyone says, why aren't you eating this? You love this. Just say, oh, that's, you know, just overlook it. Don't, don't join the conversation. <laughs> don't say, yeah, you love steak. Why aren't you eating steak? Say, just say, oh, you're not in the mood for steak? Okay. Hi, Shelly. Enjoy your retreat. How exciting. It's exciting to see all the stuff you guys are doing. Um, so I have him as my backup to more or less sort of have my back a little bit or not offer something in front of people because people immediately think it's a sacrifice for you. If you say, I'm not eating sugar, and trust me, people really don't, for some reason, it upsets them to see you change something like that. And they go, why aren't you eating sugar? What's the matter? Well, you have lost enough weight, don't you think? <laughs> and so it's not about weight. It's about how my body feels when I eat sugar. And you don't want to have to defend yourself. So my support person is usually my husband or someone I'm going out with or my sidekick. And I might say, oh, yeah, I'm doing this. But if it's, a, if it's going to be any kind of peer pressure, I would rather you know not engage in that. That reminds me of the other person who you're... You're about communication. You don't over communicate because I come from a big Italian family. If you say you're not eating something, it's like blasphemy. It's like you must have a screw loose and there's a, something seriously wrong. And that makes people even more encouraged to get you to eat it. There's nothing in this cannoli, which I will always eat a cannoli. You know that. <laughs> um, there's no calories or I made it low fat or I did this to it. And so they try to convince, you know, a vegetarian to eat meat. I mean, it's just people can't resist. Don't over communicate. You know what I find works? I'm not in the mood for it. I'm not hungry for that right now. Um, so that works. Or I think I might be allergic to it. Or I've developed a sensitivity to it. I put it in the same category mentally as milk. I don't like milk. I haven't liked milk since fifth, since kindergarten. So I don't know. I think I'm five in kindergarten. Hate milk ever since. It can be in a product. It can be in my cereal. But I will never drink a glass of milk. I will not explain to someone that I don't need to drink it. I just say, you know what, I don't like milk. It's not my thing. And you can tell by the look on my face, I mean it. And so I find it almost an aversion to try to drink it, so I won't. And people won't pressure me because I'm so congruent. Don't over-communicate, guys. Just say, not for me. It's okay. I'm doing something different. It works for my body. I'm happy about that. Or I'm just not in the mood for it. Third thing, you've got to schedule. You've got to schedule. This is important. Your health is important. It's as important as anything else in your life. It is far more important than most things in your life because you won't be able to enjoy those things in your life without your health. Schedule those activities you had planned. Schedule time to go for a walk. Schedule your doctor's appointments. Schedule the things that keep you well. I told you yesterday you've got to check your numbers. You've got to get your if you want to, if you have an appointment to, for a physical, get your blood work done. Know what your cholesterol is. Know what all those numbers are so that you have something to measure against. Hey, Marilyn, how are you? Um, so do that. Hi, Mary Lou. Enjoy your, your vacation and happy birthday. <laughs> um, so schedule things in your calendar. Write it down so you know when you're doing it. Get an accountability buddy. It's awesome to have an accountability buddy. And it doesn't have to be so formal. I have a group of friends at the gym that we just text each other. Hey, you going to the gym tonight? What time? I'll tell you, in the morning when I don't feel like being at the gym at 7.30 in the morning, I get a text message, especially from my gym husband, Rob, who I really like hanging out with. I will be like, all right, save me a bike. I'm on my way. <laughs> and so a lot of times, um, accountability buddies will give you that push because you will never let down someone else. You would disappoint yourself a hundred times a day, but you will not disappoint a friend. So guys, treat yourself like you're your friend because you are really awesome and you deserve it. Third thing about scheduling is be diligent. Be diligent. You want to say whatever you put down there, this is super important. And unless there's some serious crisis going on, you're going to keep this word to yourself. So people will try to sway you. They'll try to negotiate. They'll say, well, why don't we do this at 9 instead of 10? What are you doing at 9? You don't need to say, well, I'm going to the gym at 9. I might say that because at this point, people know if I said I'm going to the gym at 9, 
I'm not about to change that most of the time unless I don't feel good. Um, so I would just be diligent and say, you know what, this is super important to me. I'm going to feel a lot better when I'm done. I'm going to keep my word to do it. And then I'll be there. I'll meet you at 10 o'clock. Don't worry about it. I'll be there at 10, 15. You guys start without me. It's going to be great. So I've given you three tips. Thinking ahead, communicate, and scheduling. Those are three things that you can do right away to sail through this holiday season. I know it's early to talk about holidays. I'm not trying to rush them along, but like I said in the beginning, you gotta think ahead, you gotta be prepared, and um, you will actually feel so much better. When, when you're celebrating in the beginning of the year and you get through this whole holiday and you haven't gained a single pound and your clothes feel great, you're gonna feel great, you really are. So guys, um, I hope this was helpful to you. I hope you found it valuable. If you did, please share it. Um, I'm really getting a kick out of the Facebook lives and uh, so oh great this is awesome you guys thank you thank you so good to hear your comments um, so love you too Shelly love you too Th Judy um, sorry that I can't see without my glasses and you've got the glare but for those of you who wear glasses you can give me tips on that I'm not used to glasses so the glare is a little distracting to me so I keep turning my head um, but if I tur turn off the, the the blind there we won't be able to um, I won't be it will be dark in here so I hope this was helpful share it it's okay if it's not perfect you know me I'm okay with it um, if you have the ability to like mind over platter the page itself that's awesome it'd be nice but I really would love you to share this it really is nice to get the word out and help people because that's what it's about it's about making or helping people to feel happier and healthier and that's really where I've been working on the brand and rebranding myself happier healthier mind and body that's what I really 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 want to see I want to experience it and when I do my world is so much brighter I want you to experience it because I know your world is so much brighter and we are going to make this place a much happier place even if it's our tiny little piece of the world because in the end of the day if we can bring a little bit more happiness to our piece of the world it's gonna ripple somewhere it's gonna go off somewhere even if it's just in our neighborhood but we got to start somewhere. Let's start with us. Have a beautiful day. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the long weekend for those of you who have one. I love you guys.